Got me one. Haha, <laughs> on a beetle spin. YouTube. All right, so me and Samantha, we went on an adventure. We decided to catch and cook some brim. We got bluegills and those sun red breasted type sunfish. Huge. They're like, Huge. yeah, they're like almost hybrids. Like a bluegills, red breasted hybrid, and then some bluegills. Yeah, and yeah. they're tasty, which you will find out later yeah. in this episode. So I stole this idea from Brant Peacher over at Angler Up to do the catch and cook. And we happened to catch them, so then we decided to cook them. So here's us catching them. <laughs> you want to keep it? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, keep, I'll keep it. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. So Samantha, tell them how you were catching them. So this is trade secret here. We inside scoop. Inside scoop. I had rotted bread, all moldy and smelled it terrible. Was nasty. It was like even red in some spots. But green. Yeah, gross. But um, I just used rotted bread, balled it up into a little dough ball, and put it on the little hook. And those that's are, what I was catching them on. Yeah, those are a real art of dough balls. You gotta like wet it a little bit, sometimes a little spit, yeah. and you just kinda like put it all together. You gotta make it dense or else those fish will just eat it right just off. Just snip of it. it off. And then, so I caught a couple on some little beetle spin like grubs, like you get in those pan fish packets. And I mean, they're like itty bitty. I don't even think they're a sixteenth of an ounce. And I was just working them across the grass beds and I caught like one or two that way in that small bass, which you'll see here in a minute. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Got me another one right there. First one, beetle spin. That's what I'm talking about. Got me one. Haha, <laughs> on a beetle spin. Got one. Hee hee hee. Little beetle spin strikes again. On the battle 3000. All right, buddy. Go back. Off he goes. Slimes. Watch out. Now that's a haul right there. All right, Samantha, tell them about your fishing adventure. Well, combined, we caught 10 brim. Samantha was on fire. It was fun. They were they were slabs too. They were big brown. Yeah, we had to throw a few back. We caught more. Yeah, we but caught we more. Keep them. The Roadrunner was on fire. The little beetle spin. Yeah. And then Samantha was just using bread. Yeah, bread. That's my new thing. Is bread. She's good at dough balls. So now we're gonna go home and cook them. And make wine. And make wine. Okay, so we got the, the brim back to the Ponderosa, the house, and I told Samantha here that she needed to cook them, and she wasn't about it. And I but told I him he to, had to clean them first. Yeah, so I cleaned them, all 10 of them, and so how did you cook them? How did you go about cooking them? So we decided for our first round to fry them. You know, you can't really mess up fried fish too much. Um, so I did a little seasoned flour, some seasoned salt flour, and garlic powder. Um, took the fish, put it in the seasoned flour, then an egg wash, and then into breadcrumbs, cornmeal, and flour with salt, pepper, and seasoned <clears throat> salt. So every layer was seasoned a little bit. They, they were, were good. delicious. Yeah, so we also had a couple pieces of catfish, right? So we put yeah, the two. Yeah, we did. Yeah, so you did it the same way? Same exact way with the catfish. Okay, here's where it gets sticky. Samantha, tell them how you made the tartar sauce. All right, tartar sauce. Mayonnaise, sweet relish, lemon juice, a little garlic powder, oregano, and salt and pepper. I think that was it. It was pretty good. 
It's real good. It was way better than the stuff you get at Captain D's, okay? Because I used to be a big fan of the Captain D's tartar sauce, but hers was better. It was really good. I just got the recipe online and kind of tweaked it a little bit. You know, gave it a little Samism. Well, so Samisms. Do... Let me tell you about those Samisms. <laughs> sometimes they're good and sometimes they just crash and burn. Good thing Jack eats anything. So even if they crash and burn, he still eats it. Fact, Jack. <laughs> hey, don't, don't forget to tell them about the collard greens. The collard greens, so these are fresh garden collard greens. Like Jack plucked them from his garden um, before he came over. Uh, the collard greens are pretty easy. I've gotten used to making them really good. So I just take bacon grease or bacon fat, put out the bottom of the big cast iron skillet. Um, so bacon fat, a ham hock or chunks of ham, I use both this time. And then sauteed an onion little red pepper flakes, and then chicken stock. But didn't you put some kind of special ham in there, bacon? What is it, sweet, sweet bacon? Well, the, the bacon fat that I used this time was maple bacon fat. So every time I make bacon, I just save the bacon grease, and I happened to buy maple bacon one day, and that was the bacon fat that I scooped out. I didn't realize it. So these were a little sweet. Yeah, they was, it was sweet it was, goodness. They were different, but they were really good, so. It was real good. And I think you gotta make collards a little spicy, so I do Zesty. red pepper flakes. A little red pepper flakes. And then just, like I said, chicken stock, and then just add the collards slowly, and as they wilt down, keep stuffing them in there and let them simmer away. Fill you right up. We got some huge brown right here, and some catfish. All right, there's the whole meal. Looks good. We just showed you what it was, what it looked like when it was a finished product. So Samantha, is there anything that you would have done different after tasting the brim and the catfish and the collard greens? Yes. What is it? Make cornbread with it. Cornbread. <laughs> you can't have collard greens without cornbread. I thought it was perfect. Yeah. I don't think I would change anything. Yeah. It's like the catfish was good in the same process. And then the brim, those brim were almost big enough to fillet, but I feel like it's just, I feel like it's almost blasphemy to fillet a brim because you're supposed to eat the fins, the little crispies. Yeah, that was my first time eating a brim. I mean, I might have ate one a long time ago, but that was my first time. And I, I wasn't a big fan of the fins, but Gotta, Maybe I'll get used to it. It's them the next crunchies. Time. The crunchies. That catfish though. Yeah, the catfish was I good. I love me some catfish. The brim, you gotta you gotta like fry hard to get those fins to go crispy. Yeah, maybe next time we can crisp them up a little more. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, we used to catch the little brim and like the only thing you could eat on them was pretty pretty much the crispy fins. So I was trying to teach her how to do that. Yeah. And we did, I did learn a trick on how to scoop out all the meat without the bone. So yeah, Jack showed the me the, the, little, the little fork move and yeah. it was pretty cool. She was on a roll then. <laughs> but anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget about us. Comment down below your recipes. I know you guys out there got some awesome recipes that need to be shared to the world because this is a community of sharing. That's, That's what right. YouTube is. And Samantha is always trying to share her recipes on this channel. So don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll, oh, follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram and on Facebook at Yak Molly. And I'll see you guys later.